Hey guys, today we are going to start looking at exponential functions. We're going to answer the question, what is an exponential function and what are some key features of exponential functions? So first we are going to look at a linear function versus an exponential function. So a linear function is something like y equals 2x and let's fill out this table and observe any patterns. So y equals 2x means I would do 2 times negative 2 to get the y. 2 times whatever the x value is. So 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. 2 times 0 is 0. 2 times 1 is 2. And 2 times 2 is 4. And 2 times 3 is 6. So as you can see in our table, the pattern is that we are adding 2 each time. So let's look at what happens whenever I graph that. So negative 2, negative 4 would be right here. Negative 1, negative 2, 0, 0, 1, 2, 2, 4, and 3, 6. So there is our linear function. It makes a line when we graph, and in the table it adds by that constant rate. So a linear function grows at a constant rate. So now let's look at an exponential function. So instead of doing 2 times the x value, this time we're going to do 2 raised to the x value. So this is what an exponential function is whenever the variable is in the exponent. So 2 to the negative 2 is what we would be doing here, which really means 1 over 2 to the positive 2 or 1 over 4. And then 2 to the negative 1 means 1 over 2 to the positive 1, or 1 over 2. And then 2 to the 0, anything to the 0 power is 1. 2 to the 1 means 2. 2 to the second power is 4. And 2 to the 8th, or 2 to the 3rd power means 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8. So this time we are not adding at a constant rate. If you look from 1 fourth to 1 half, 1 half to 1, 1 to 2, 2 to 4, 4 to 8, we are multiplying by 2 to get to that next value. So we are not growing at a constant rate because the distance between our numbers keeps getting bigger. We keep growing at a bigger rate. So let's go ahead and graph this and see what it looks like. So negative 2, 1 fourth would be really close to the x-axis. Negative 1 and 1 half would be just a little bit above that. 0 and 1 would be right here. 1 and 2, 2, 4, and then 3, 8. So it is not going to make a line. It is going to make a graph like this, which is a curve kind of makes an L-shaped curve. So exponential functions make a curve and the growth starts out slow and then it speeds up, which you can see right here it was growing kind of slow and then it picked up. So that is the graphs of an exponential function and that's kind of the difference between a linear and an exponential function. So here is the basic form of an exponential function, y equals a times b to the x. Exponential functions are going to have that variable as the exponent and they grow or decay rapidly. And they're written in this form, y equals a times b to the x, where a is either that initial value or y intercept, and b is the growth slash decay rate and is greater than zero. b is greater than one means that it's an exponential growth function, and b is less than one means that it's an exponential decay function. And then like usual with functions, x is the input and y is the output. Um, so let's go back and look at this one really quick. The y-intercept was 1 because another way that we could write this function is y equals 1 times 2 to the x. Right? 1 times 2 to the x would be more simply written as 2 to the x. So now it's written in this form. You can clearly see the y-intercept is 1, which we also saw in the graph. And then the b value is 2, which is greater than 1, which is why this graph was growing. So now let's look at a couple more. 
A is the number out in front that is not being raised to the exponent. So on this one, the A value is four. And then the B value is one half. And since the B value is one half, which is less than one, that means it's a decay function. Okay, let's look at the second one. Three is the number that's being multiplied and not being raised to the exponent. So that's the A value, that would be the Y intercept. And then two is the number being raised to the exponent. So that's the B value. And since two is greater than one, this is a growth function. Okay, let's look at graphs a little bit more specifically between exponential growth and exponential decay. So this would be exponential growth, those two graphs, because a graph that shows exponential growth will be increasing and it's in that backwards L shape. So this is increasing from left to right. And then this one wants us to identify the y-intercept from the graph and equation. So we actually looked at this function earlier. We can see the y-intercept right here is 1. And remember when we don't have a number here, it's that invisible 1. 1 times 2 to the x is the same thing. Okay, then exponential decay is when our graph is decreasing, like these two. And it says a graph that shows exponential decay will be decreasing and it's in an L shape. We have y equals one half to the x graphed and we need to identify the y-intercept from the graph and the table. So again, the y-intercept, the a value is one. I can see that from the graph. And in the equation, it's that invisible one coefficient out in front. Okay, so a new key feature of an of a exponential function that we're going to talk about is something called an asymptote. Okay, this is not just in exponential functions. You are just first learning about it in exponential functions. You will learn more about asymptotes in algebra two. So an asymptote is an invisible line that the graph approaches, but it's never going to touch or cross. So right here, you can see that this graph is approaching this line here but since it has this asymptote, it's never going to cross it. An asymptote will always have, or an exponential graph will always have a horizontal asymptote. So the equation of the asymptote will always be in y equals a number form because horizontal lines always have like a y equals two equation. There are such things as vertical and slant asymptotes that we will learn about in other functions besides just exponential functions. But for now, we are just focusing on exponential functions, so we're gonna focus on those horizontal. So let's focus on these right here. I can see that this first one is approaching this line. There's that invisible asymptote that it's going to approach over here. So that would be a y equals 2 equation. And then this graph right here looks like we have an asymptote right here. That's where the graph is approaching, which would be y equals negative 3.